Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a MacBook that I got off of eBay for only $25 plus postage. Now it doesn't exactly work properly, so let's read the description and get a bit of an idea of what we got. So the MacBook we have listed here is for parts or repair, late 2008, Apple 13 inch aluminium MacBook, no operating system. There are several photos which lead me to believe it's the base model 2008 unibody MacBook because it doesn't have a backlight. Apparently the touchpad fails to click sometimes, but you can always use a mouse and the keyboard has some sticky keys. Now from the photos, it looked dirty. So I'm just going to hope that these keys are like actually sticky and not faulty. Apparently it needs a good clean and the keyboard is pretty grotty. They also specify that the battery does not hold the charge, which is somewhat disappointing because the battery replacements for these are not cheap like the more modern unibody MacBook Pros. Apparently they've securely wiped the hard disk and it will be packed very carefully for shipping. So this package has just arrived, so I think we should open it up and see exactly what they sent. Here we have the box that the laptop was shipped in. Using our trusty knife, I got into the packaging. They weren't kidding when they said it would be well packaged. Inside the box we have the laptop itself wrapped in several layers of bubble wrap. Now we get our first look at the unibody MacBook. On first inspection it doesn't look too bad at all. No major dents or cosmetic damage, just quite dirty for the most part. Lifting this lever on the back gives you easy access to both the battery and the hard drive. The blinking green light indicates that this laptop is holding some sort of charge. It also came with a genuine MagSafe charger. After a bit of fiddling, I worked out that the end of this power cord is actually faulty. However, I'm not going to try and fix it. I'm just going to use a power supply that I know works. Powering it on reveals that it does appear to work. It booted into a recovery partition. As stated in the ad, the hard disk is 160 gigabytes. Using a macOS 10.10 .10 install USB, I began an installation. About half an hour later, the laptop successfully booted. Turns out that this is indeed the base 2 GHz model, with twice as much RAM at 4 GB. The battery reads a cycle count of 212, with a capacity of 3.4 amp hours. So now that we've got it up and running, let's give it a much needed cleaning. Starting things off, I gave the lid a spray with some eucalyptus oil. The surface has a lot of fine scratches, likely due to being thrown in a school bag. The keyboard area is truly filthy. I began wiping it down with an antibacterial wipe. It's going to take a lot of effort to get the gunk out from between the keycaps. Aside from having a lot of debris on it, the display surface has next to no damage. Some lens cleaning solution on a microfiber cloth removed most of the smudges. There is however a small scratched area near the MacBook logo. The back plate had only a small dent and some scratches on it. We can now remove the battery and the hard drive. There is one small Phillips head screw holding the hard disk bracket in place. To get further inside the MacBook, several more screws had to be taken out. This particular MacBook shares many design similarities to the 2009 through 2012 13 inch MacBook Pros. Plastic clips on either side hold the backplate on. I definitely spot a few little dust bunnies in there. The backplate has also accumulated its fair share of dust. Beginning the disassembly, I removed both 2GB sticks of DDR3 memory. The single fan provides cooling for both the CPU and GPU. It's not hard to believe that these laptops ran very hot. All of this built up dust I'm sure wouldn't be helping. I unplugged all of the connectors on the surface of the logic board. There are quite a few so be sure to not miss any. Also be extra careful not to bend any of the display connector pins. Holding the logic board in place are several torque screws. After removing the hinge cover that's over the microphone, I tried to pull out the board. Removing the logic board was actually somewhat difficult. 
It turns out, just like in the $150 MacBook Pro video I did, the heat pipes have actually melted to the back of the keyboard. The cooling solution appears to be covered in a fine layer of pet fur. While I could swap out the optical drive for a second hard drive, I find it quite useful for watching movies and burning CDs. Now it's time to vacuum up any loose debris on the casing. Using a small brush really helps. Once sufficiently dusted, I got into all of the hard to reach places with some methylated spirits. That's a bit of an improvement I must say. Moving on to the optical drive, a light dusting was all it needed. I also got the fan looking a whole lot better. Vacuuming up all of the dead bugs and some of the dust on the logic board was next. This vacuum cleaner is a little too good at sucking. Four Phillips head screws with little springs hold the cooler in place. Now we get our first look at the crusty old thermal paste. Methylated spirits on a cotton tip made removing the paste quite easy. With the dyes looking nice and shiny, we can now move on to the heatsink. After 11 years, the paste has become dry and brittle. The new paste should help the system run slightly cooler. I tried applying the smallest amount I could, before reattaching the cooler. There was a buildup of gunk around the edges of the case. I also noticed that the display hinge was wobbly. Tightening the screws appeared to fix that issue. With the internals cleaned out, I began the reassembly process. The logic board fit back in far easier. With all of the screws and connectors successfully reattached, I put the cleaned out fan back in place. Now that the internals are all clean, I clipped the backplate back on. To boost the laptop's responsiveness, I'm going to install an inexpensive 120GB crucial solid state drive. I got it brand new for about $28 off of eBay. Read and write speeds are going to be far better with this new drive. Last of all, the battery and quick release cover can be put back on. With it all back together, let's see if the laptop still works. Much to my relief, the laptop did in fact turn back on. The screen went quite dark during the macOS installation. Perhaps auto brightness was on. Either way, it detected the new SSD and I began the installation. Some time passed and we were back with a functioning MacBook once more. I gave it one final cleaning and this is how I got the laptop looking. While not cosmetically perfect by any means, I believe I've definitely made it quite usable once again. But what exactly is this laptop capable of though? Hello guys and welcome. First of all, I thought I would try playing some YouTube videos. It runs great, even in HD. The weird lines you see on screen aren't actually there. It's just my camera having trouble with Moray. Into an external display. A game I love to play is Minecraft. On this laptop, I installed the performance enhancing mod Optifine and lowered the graphical settings. Creating a new world took quite a lot of time due to the very weak Core 2 Duo processor. Immediately, it seemed to run alright. The mouse acceleration was hard to get used to though. I got around 25 to 30 frames per second, so I would definitely call this playable. When in the Steam launcher, it says it'll stop running on macOS 10.10 .10 in 0 days. Running CSGO on the absolute lowest settings and resolution was very difficult. The game still looks pretty good though, it just doesn't run very good. Far too slow to be any fun. Basic Photoshop work is also possible. Terraria also runs, but somewhat slowly, even on low settings. The Unigen Heaven benchmark runs at around 6 to 9 frames per second, with the CPU reaching 80 degrees Celsius, which is a fairly reasonable temperature. Last of all, I ran Cinebench R15. With only two processing cores, this took a really long time. The score of only 104 definitely reflects that. While the keycaps definitely feel worn, this is a great keyboard to type on. This is the amount of travel I wish newer MacBooks had. While the battery does seem to work, sometimes it'll last just under 3 hours or sometimes it'll drain in under 10 minutes. Unlike slightly newer unibody MacBook Pros, the batteries in these 13-inch MacBooks are actually kind of expensive. 
and you're definitely looking at paying upwards of $80. The port selection is pretty good as well. This was a laptop design that Apple refined and used for several years. So there we have it, a $25 MacBook off of eBay. Installing the SSD definitely made it a lot faster, however the fairly weak CPU and GPU mean you're definitely not going to be gaming on it, but light web browsing and writing up documents was a lot of fun. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to see more in the future, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.